So I have asked AI to write me a traditional Irish song with Austin Butler as a mixture between Elvis and St. Patrick reading the Irish of their alcoholism by having a parade and pinching them in the style of Luke Kelly. Patrick's Day. Welcome to the Rhyme Time Podcast with me, a, p- a leprechaun. How are you getting on? I le- this is the day we celebrate get the 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 liberation of Ireland from a load of snakes by a lad from uh, uh, well, Wales, and be celebrated by getting absolutely blackout drunk, and reinforcing the worldwide stereotype that we Irish people are uh, alcoholics. It's the Rhyme Time Podcast. <clears throat> um, it's the St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I'm wearing green stuff here to, to get into the vibe with the stuff. Um, what a, what a bad, uh, is it bad day. Not a huge fan of St. Patrick's Day, to be honest with you. Um, it's not even St. Patrick's Day. I'm recording this a week before that. Um, uh, um, before it... Or is it even longer than that? What days is it? Speak amongst yourselves there. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to be... Because re- I'm releasing this on Wednesdays. I released it before, Patrick. But sorry, I'm very tired. Uh, I went to I went to a late show on last night of uh, Doom 2. Good. It is good. Good overall. I enjoyed it overall. But I don't understand why... You know, like in sci-fi films, it's always... You can nearly anticipate what the dialogue is going to be in a copy and paste you know the typical is like i am the one i am the chosen one just the dialogue really let it down because it was a really good concept Uh, i'm not going to give away any spoilers (coughs) i did read the book a while back but i have to say the actual it it was very confusing it's not i didn't find it a super entertaining read but the films were great i mean your man dennis villeneuve in terms of a cinematic director like the 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 landscape unbelievable um but i just feel like those films does the dialogue need to be as bad as it is game of thrones is a good example of good dialogue or not that hacky typical i am the chosen one bullsh um a gripe i have another gripe i have with it is it's really odd nowadays it was like a throwback to the 80s where the villains were so irredeemably evil. There's no like nuance to the character. You know, we like a lot of like character, particularly after like Breaking Bad and Sopranos, where you like try and empathize with a more villainous character. Well, I don't know. I just found in this, it was like just way over the top and hard to. It wasn't as nuanced as they could have made it because it's like, you know, it's it's absolute evil against good which I feel is just really played out and not as challenging as, you know, being able to empathize with, you know, the likes of you, you, the bald lads, the alopecia lads, um, Austin Butler and who's your man? Uh, oh, who's the bi- who's your man? Oh, I'm, he's in Guardians of the Galaxy as well. His name was in my head and that's what Google is for. Um, cast of Dune 2. No, not Jason Momoa. He was in the first one. Dave Bautista, I fucking knew that. I flipping knew that. Um, who's the other fellow? Who's the big fat lad in the <laughs> big floating fat lad? The real, like, you know, the contrast, the real artistic choice to have the fattest man in the 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 cat in the cast the fattest character to be floating above the rest um Stellan Skarsgård good lad good lad uh, but they were just you know just too like Dave Bautista's character just goes around <laughs> screaming his words his lines throughout the whole film I mean 
you try to think, it's like, is there a correlation between a man getting so large that they lose any ability to be a good actor? Like, look at any, like, really big, strong man actor in the past, like, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, all the action stars. They're not great performers. And this lad's just going around screen like Dave Patista kinda has that face. It's it's like it's like how you he has like an anime needing to take a dump face. Like if you're really, really constipated, he's just got like he looks like he's about to burst out of his own face. And all his lines he was delivering like he wanted to take a big massive screamer, a big growler into the jacks. He's like, ah find him And just like fuck smashing people's faces off stuff and needing desperately to use the bathroom he looks like he looks like he's about to explode he kind of took me out of it he's just i don't know and then austin butler like austin butler in fairness he did a good job in terms of i mean you wonder how much the makeup assists in these performances where people go like oh he was amazing he was terrifying he was like yeah he was completely hairless. He no eyebrows and no eyelashes. Do you know how disconcerting that feels? And I'm not pointing out like, you know, people with alopecia, that's fine, ob- obviously. But naturally, there is something a bit jarring because it's so unusual. And he's like, I mean, the first scene he goes around, he just starts like poking himself in the tongue with a dagger. Uh, I don't know. Aston Butler, he just, you know, he's a child actor, of course, so. Most people who are child actors never, ironically, never really figure out how to be a real person. Like he tries, it's like he's trying really hard to be the idea of what cool was in his head. He was in, it was one of the interviews for Dune. I saw an interviewer ask him what was his favorite film as a child. And he said, the good, the bad and the ugly. Like, it's okay, Austin. You're one of the biggest movie stars in the world you're cool you are you're cool it's okay I'm just glad he didn't try to bust out the Elvis voice for for that character (laughs) remember when he was pretending like you couldn't shake the Elvis accent there is no way you spend okay what did he spend maybe like max two years there's no way he would still be speaking like Elvis years afterwards and he like made a whole big thing out of trying to shake the accent I think it actually would have made the film a bit better. You know, he comes up to when he's facing Timothy Chalamet's character. He's like, come on, baby. You ready to dance? I'm a bald ass motherfucker. Um, Yeah. Thought I'd have more for that, but uh, coming up with bits in the moment and trying to keep them going is hard. Elvis, Elvis versus Elvis versus Paul Atreides. Anyway, so it's St. Patrick's Day. Happy, happy Patrick's Day to you. Um, and uh, it's it's a day. It is a day. Hang on, let me see what I'm. It's a day where we celebrate uh, the day a Welshman came over to Ireland and fucked a load of snakes out of the gaff. And now we all get locked on the on the seventeenth of March every year. Didn't actually start here in Ireland. It was originally started over in in uh, the US, obviously. Um, you know because it's just it's like St Patrick's Day. Even what it's become in Ireland is like a celebration of the idea of Ireland from an American's point of view. Just blown way out of proportion really ex- over exaggerated um gimmicky and and just plain racist to be honest <laughs> i mean like don't isn't it uh, what, what is notre dame college is their their icon is a, a, a tiny leprechaun ready to fight people and that is the image that is just synonymous with saint patrick's day it's like lads in green red hair fighting each other uh, not necessarily um, little people, but just Irish people in general. And then, you know, what do we do when we go out on a day that is uh, synonymous with us, a stereotype of us being alcoholics? We go and get absolutely shit-faced. We go and get 
slammed drunk, along with everybody else from different cultures who want to do it as well. Um, but St. Patrick, he was um, he was a Welsh lad who was kidnapped by he was kidnapped by raiders and taken as a slave back in Ireland from you know over in the UK. So technically, you could argue between Ireland and the Brits. Did we start it? Did we start it? You know? Um, and then he escaped and then decided to come back and convert us all to Christianity. Which is just uh, a really glossy way of saying he came over with a load of uh, soldiers and absolutely eviscerated the boys around the country. Um, so the biggest parade is in New York. Started by Irish people who'd, who'd moved over, I think it was over 200 years ago, potentially. I don't know. Uh, and one of the biggest celebrations in, in Ireland outside of um, Dublin or the other cities is in Down Patrick in County Down where he, he is said to be buried. <laughs> the name is Down Patrick. So they literally named it as uh, uh, um, literally as humanly possible Patrick went down here that's what we call the town down Patrick <clears throat> and what else did I look up the, the shortest St. Patrick's Day parade in the world formerly took place in Dripsy in Cork County Cork uh, it, the parade lasted 23.4 metres and travelled between the village's two pubs and the tradition began in 1999, but ended after five years when one of the pubs closed. <laughs> so I think maybe just one year, then they just had like all the floats <clears throat> outside the one pub that didn't even move. They didn't even have to do wheels in it. You just like put all these, all the, all the floats outside the front of it. And then they're like, you know what, this is, this is a little bit sad. Maybe we should just cancel this and go, uh, go into Belfast. Um, that's hilarious. Why do like who cares about parades? The idea of a parade is so much better than actually going to a parade. Because when you're there, all you do is you stand you stand at the sides, just watching people go by on, you know, big colourful floats just waving at the crowd and you wave back and you stand there for three hours while your back gets sore. Uh, uh and then wait an hour or two in traffic to get home depending on on where you're living. Um, I've never ever enjoyed any parade for anything. It's just I don't know. Am I, should I? I don't. No, I shouldn't. Um. But uh. Yeah, it's. I mean. I wouldn't. I, I'd say. I'd say you could ask a lot of Irish people who wouldn't be too averse to getting rid of of the holiday I mean I don't particularly like it. I I, th- I find it funny that you know as I was saying earlier it's like a, uh, Irish people kind of bemoan the stereotype of us being heavy drinkers and then on the day on the day that we celebrate um, an Irish Irish identity essentially is what it's become somewhat kind of uh, ten, uh, tentatively, tentatively about Irish identity, and then what do we do on that day? We get like absurdly drunk, completely. Like uh, you will see people, you will see people. Uh, like I, I remember one of my, one of the things I do remember from St. Patrick's. I was trying to think of stuff that happened, but I don't think I ever really did stuff on St. Patrick's Day to actually have stories. But I remember it was the day of, it was the day before, <laughs> it was the day before St. Patrick's Day. And it was in college and there was a guy I knew, for, he was like a year under me in arts. And we were pa- driving past Anglesey C- Street, oh Jesus, Anglesey Street Garda Station in Cork in the car, 11am. And this chap was up against the w- outer wall in the car park of the police station, completely passed out. And I recognised him from the lectures, or from college basically, uh, just com- like 11am the day beforehand. That's commitment to the cause. Probably didn't make the day, but he's better off. You'd find it particularly embarrassing to get absolutely locked 
at like St. Patrick's Day in England, say London, because the association with us are as drunk paddies. And then, oh, just, I, I could only imagine the absolute carnage on the streets over here of expats. Because there's something like in Irish people, once they move away, they become even more Irish. But like lean into the, lean into the stereotypes because there's a comfort in that. But not in front of the Brits, guys. Come on, not in front of the Brits. Speaking of the Brits, I was on a Ryanair flight there recently. Uh, th- is this not the most British thing you've ever heard? I'm quite, I'm 6'3", right? So those, if I'm trying to go to sleep, put my head back, the back of my head just leans back over the, the, the headrest. And my hair was like getting into this fella's mouth, apparently, because he was leaning forward trying to sleep. But he's punching my headdress, head headdress, headrest, <laughs> and I'm like, turn around, I'm like, is is everything okay? <clears throat> and he's like, you need to move your head forward, because your hair is going into my mouth. And I was looking back at his headrest that was completely empty and unoccupied, and he is trying to encroach upon mine. And now I have to get off my own headdress, headrest, headrest, because some of my hair is getting in his mouth. And I was so shocked, I just, I complied and I just put my head forward and just absolutely, oh my God, the scenarios I was playing over in my head that I did not enact upon him at all. Well, I gave him what for in my head. It's my headrest, right? It's not yours. Get out, get, get uh, Brits out, Brits out of my headrest. Um... Yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I don't like, <laughs> I don't do the St. Patrick's episode. I don't like St. Patrick's Day at all. It particularly because, well, I, 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 I personally find it annoying, the stereotype of us being alcoholics. And it's kind of embarrassing then if you see Irish people going out and getting absolutely twisted. And it's like, well, what are you doing, lads? Like, as, we shouldn't be going out and doing that. All right, we shouldn't, and the rest of the world does as well. Everybody goes to get absolutely pissed on St. Patrick's Day, but it's like celebrating a negative part of someone's culture that they deny, and going and it would be like, do you know what it'd be like? It'd be like going over to America or having a day around the day where you have, uh, where you have a day where you celebrate gun violence. Saint, uh, Saint Patrick's Day. And everybody walks around with a gat. And there's a big parade. <laughs> there's a big parade and instead of floats. It's just a load of tanks. With like people up on top with like AK-47s and, uh, and shotguns are all waving at each other. And then out of nowhere, the audience and the people on the floats or the tanks just start opening fire. And it's just a day where you just shoot the shit out of everybody. Um. <laughs> uh, what else do we got here? In fairness, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't think St. Patrick's Day is going to stop anytime soon because of the amount of money that goes into it or is in it. I mean, it's a the day it's actually that's actually spent on drinking. Holy moly. Like, um, do you remember, does anyone remember, if you're listening, if you're watching, <laughs> I look at the analytics. I know how many people are. Um, people is a fairly generous term to give to the listenership. <laughs> Does anybody remember? Eight, ten years ago, they invented Arthur's Day. Does anybody remember this? It was a day, it was essentially, they essentially created a second St. Patrick's Day. Um, I can't remember what it was. Let me get a Mr. Mr. Google here. Arthur's Day, um, where at a, was it like at s- one minute to six in the afternoon, maybe that was the inaugural time or day that Arthur McGuinness made the first Guinness, everybody in the pub would get a pint of Guinness on this day and they'd all cheers to Arthur and loads of pubs had just Guinness on, like loads of pubs would only have a license to sell stuff that is sold by Guinness. And there will be lineups of artists playing all over the country in Ireland. There was Imelda May, there was Paolo Nettini, 
was in a place called the Old Oak down in Cork, which is absolutely absurd because that pub is a shithole. Like just, we used to call it Jurassic Park because it was for older people to go around and have affairs. Um, let me just get, let me get some of the, the, the lineups here from Arthur's Day. Uh, Newton Faulkner, David Gray, Melda May, Calvin Harris, Republic of Loose, The Blizzards, OK Go, Razorlight, Sugar Babes, Lisa Hannigan, The Undertones, The Wombats, and this was all over, there's like Dublin, Galway, Cork, Belfast, Limerick and Waterford maybe? But this only went on, I mean, it was on in 2010 and 2011. Was that in 2012 as well? They hardly had four years of it, did they? Jeez, I think they had four. It went up to 2013. But it was just getting to the point where, like, lads, this is, like, we cannot have another St. Patrick's Day. We already have a day where collectively, as a nation, we embarrass ourselves and do things that we regret. Please. Please, can we not just wrap it up? I mean, we don't need to. And the ironic thing is, Arthur Arthur McGuinness was a Protestant, technically an Englishman. So that would have been two days where the Irish would be celebrating a British person. <laughs> as part of like a national holiday. Like, Guinness is a Protestant drink, lads. Sorry to break the news to you, if uh, you didn't know that. But there you go. Um, where am I at time-wise? So, all right. So I, I've decided to do a new thing. I, so we're, the whole thing, but what we always say about the Rhyme Time Podcast is we're trying to get better each time. What I've been doing so far with the songs hasn't been great. <laughs> because I'm not good at, I, I, I like, not even talking self-deprecating. I have never done improv improv rapping or improv singing, so it's quite difficult. And a lot of the times, what comes out is just, I don't know, it's not great, right? Because I've called the podcast the Rhyme Time Podcast, and then there's like a pressure on being able to rhyme in the moment. And I don't want to pre-write songs beforehand because it takes a lot of time. So what I've decided to do is I will do an episode... I'll talk free form, and at the end of it, I'll review what it was I was spoken about, and then I'm going to ask uh, my AI app with all that information to create a song. And I, I'll either I, either I look, I play that, I'll have the music pre-recorded, I play the music, and then the first time I start singing it was when I would see the lyrics. I'll try that, and if that doesn't work, and if that's not good. Uh, like if the melodies aren't going very well or it doesn't sound great, what I might do is just look at the lyrics and then create a melody out of that and do the song at the end. I'd rather not. I think it'd be funnier if I was discovering the lyrics along with yourselves while singing them. So what I what I did is I asked, just as a little warm-up, I actually asked AI, uh, what are the top tips for enjoying a St. Patrick's Day? And... Uh, AI gave me nine tips. The first one is, here are, some to- here are some top tips for enjoying St. Patrick's Day festivities. Wear green, okay? And address, embrace the tradition of wearing green on St. Patrick's Day. To show your spirit and avoid getting pinched. I, the, I had no idea that getting pinched was such a big part. If you're not wearing green on St. Patrick's Day, you're supposed to pinch someone. <laughs> it's like, at what point do you stop? Do you just pinch them until like they're completely covered in bruises and and and, and uh, yeah, um, it's a big. I think it started in America and it's supposed to be if green makes you invisible to leprechauns, so if you're not wearing green, they'll come along and they'll pinch you, but it's literally just people pinching each other. Um, so uh, first thing that AI suggested me to do is uh, physically or potentially sexually assault people. Um, number two is attend a parade. Many, many cities around the world host St. Patrick's Day parades with colourful floats, music and performances. We've already covered parades. If you like parades, you are one of two types of people. Number one, 
you're probably a young child under the age of 10. Or two, you're the most boring person on the planet. If, you, if you're above the, I don't know, maybe give them up to 12. But if you are gone into pubescence or beyond that and you truthfully enjoy parades, your friends don't like hanging out with you if you have friends. Number three. Enjoy Irish food and drinks. Try traditional Irish dishes, dish, 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 dishes like corned beef and cabbage, Irish stew and soda bread. <laughs> you can also indulge in Irish beverages like Guinness Irish whiskey or a refreshing pint of green beer. Um, what do they put in the beer to make it green? I bet you it's just dye. I don't need to look that up. You got there in the end. Uh, yeah, so just eat... Eat, eat peasant food, um, food that's, um, you know, the wide range of Irish food, beef, cabbage, stew. Uh, <laughs> listen to Irish music, enjoy the sounds of traditional Irish music by listening to bands or musicians playing lively jigs and reels. I mean, AI is being just as racist as any other person. I mean, all these things are just like, I mean, I suppose it does go on, but like, uh, I don't know. A lot of this stuff, because it's got so commercialized, has just made it seem inauthentic or... Am I talking shite as well, though? People do do that, you know? People go to see jigs and... Shut up, Owen. Shut up. Learn about Irish culture. Take some time to learn about the history and traditions of Ireland, St. Patrick's Day. You can explore Irish folklore, myths, and legends associated with the holiday. Um, behind the, tr- the, b- the myths behind the true life events of a British man coming over and um, murdering the indigenous people, the indigenous p- pagan people, and the ones that are left over converting them to their own ideals of, of, of religion and, and society. Um, host a gathering. It's a top tip for St. Patrick's Day. Host a gathering. Gathering with... Irish themes, snacks, drinks, play games, and enjoy each other's company. At this point, I think AI is just kind of running out of ideas to do on St. Patrick's Day because that is just a reiteration of <coughs> a previous point about having traditional Irish foods. There's three more. Celebrate responsibly. <laughs> if you choose to drink alcohol, do so responsibly and make sure to have a designated driver or alternative transportation arranged if needed. Um, God. AI is a bit of a nerd. Get involved in community events. Participate in local St. Patrick's Day events such as charity runs. Have fun and spread cheer is all about celebrating and having a good time. Embrace the festive spirit. Spread joy and enjoy. No, listen. This the top tips here, all a load of bollocks. I think it should just be one thing. Get absolutely hammered. That's what AI should be telling us because that's what everybody does on St. Patrick's Day. Um... So what I'm going to do now, so I'm just going to review what it was that I was talking about, and then I'm going to ask AI to create the lyrics for a song, given all the stuff that I was speaking about. Um, and then I will try to sing it upon seeing it for the first time. So I have asked AI to write me a traditional Irish song with Austin Butler as a mixture between Elvis and St. Patrick, reading the Irish of their alcoholism by having a parade and pinching them in the style of Luke Kelly.
in the green hills of Erin Fair. Austin Butler, a man who is beyond compare. With Elvis's charm, St. Patrick's grace, to rid the Irish of their alcohol they didn't chase. He's got Elvis's charm, St. Patrick's grace, to rid the Irish of the alcoholic taste. Austin Butler is like Elvis and St. Patrick mixed into one. He marched through the towns with the swagger so grand, leading a parade throughout the land, singing songs to touch their weary souls in the style of Luke Kelly, reaching their goals. <laughs> drinkers with the love in his eyes, awakening their spirits to rise. Put down the bottle, embrace the day, let joy and laughter light your way. He did ignite with music, love, and pure delight. Austin Butler, a legend anew in the land where all the shamrocks grew. So raise a glass to this man so bold whose tale in Irish is told. Elvis and St. Patrick in him combined. A savior of Irish kind.
Austin Butler is our savior. 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 Saint Austin Butler is our savior. Austin Butler is our savior. Saint Austin Butler is our savior. Austin Butler is our savior. Saint Austin Butler is our savior. And there we go. That was it. <laughs> Don't know how funny the lyrics were. I think was it a bit too Maybe it wasn't specific enough. I wonder. Hmm. I'm gonna keep it in though. We'll keep it. This is this is I, I think I got something cooking here. Okay. I think there's something good here. I like it. The better I, I felt good when I thought of the idea, and I, uh, it's early days. It's fine. So this is episode nine, the St. Patrick's Happy Patrick's Patrick's Patrick Fast Festival. Go out there on the weekend, get pissed, and if you like this podcast at all, <laughs> share it with someone. Tell someone about it. Give it five stars wherever you're listening to. Please, it helps me out. Algorithm, other things. Uh, help get this popping off and popping on, and then we're getting we're learning here. We're sco- this is going somewhere. Having AI as a co-host is could be good because doing a podcast on your own kind of feels like you are going nuts. But listen here, uh, best of luck. Happy Shamrock. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Austin Butler is our savior. Saint Austin Butler is our savior. Austin Butler is our savior. Saint Austin Butler is our savior. Austin Butler is our savior. Saint Austin Butler is our savior. Austin Butler is our savior. Saint.